Hello everyone. I uh, can't sleep. So I'm doing this before I head to bed tonight. I am sorry for the audio issues in the last one. I'm using a new noise suppressor and a new compressor. Um, and found a few volume issues that I hope resolve it. I'm just going to be reading four SCPs. And we are getting to the first short story that will be read on Patreon. Um, my Patreon's actually not doing that well right now, so hopefully that'll draw some interest. Uh, remember to leave a like and a comment on the video if you enjoy the content. It actually does help a lot. And I would certainly appreciate hearing from y'all. We're going to be reading... SCP slash wiki dot wiki dot dot com. Um, I was told to actually say that out because of licensing and such. It's all under the what was that licensing's name again? Creative Commons. Anyway, SCP zero one one. Object class safe. This is, I've had this up already, the Sentient Civil War Memorial Statue. Special Containment Procedure. Item SCP-011 and the area surrounding it are cleaned once every day. For safety purposes, cleaning should start at least 30 minutes after sundown. Cleaning should always be performed by at least two personnel who are also advised to note anything unusual about the item or the debris cleaned up. In a situation where the item cannot be cleaned for more than two days, local residents must be contacted and instructed not to approach the item. Description SCP-011 is a Civil War memorial statue located in Woodstock, Vermont. The statue is the image of a young male soldier holding a musket at his side and is carved out of granite quarried within the area. Occasionally, SCP-011 has been observed lifting its musket to the sky to fire at birds which attempt to land or defecate on it. Reports detail that its movements produce soft grinding sounds but do not cause any structural failure. Oddly, the gunfire is very similar to that of a standard firearm Despite observations that the item only loads granite bullets and granite powder into the musket, which is also unharmed by the firing. In spite of its efforts, some fecal matter does manage to strike SCP-011, and it has reportedly become distressed when it has a large amount on it, on some rare occasions, even firing at humans. Adenium was assigned to maintain SCP-011, or to document it, or to see document 011-1 for instruction. Maintenance brief. Additional information. SCP-011's seeming sentience has increased since the first act report of activity in 1995. As of 2004, the item's containment procedures have been dropped, but it remains under constant observation. Recorded below are landmark events in its activity. 312-1950. 1995. Woodstock resident reports to Tachi's eyes moving. First sign of activity. 9-30-1995. Tachi shoots musket for the first time. 10-9-1995. Tachi begins shooting birds from the sky. 1-25-1996. Registration as SCP-011. Containment procedures begin. 4-14-1997, SCP-011, observed uh, moving casually and looking around. 5-3-2000, after caretaker redacted, Joker Lee shouts good shot to SCP-011. The item replies, thank you, in a reportedly very human voice, first speech from statute. 10-22-2001, SCP-011 has conversation with caretaker redacted. 2001. Shooting a bird stops. 2 6 2002. At the imploring of the caretaker, SCP 011 steps down from the pedestal. 2003 through 2004, SCP 011 reaches a human level of self awareness. 
11 10 2004 payment procedure dropped custody of scp 011 transferred to caretaker 5 17 2005 caretaker reports that scp 011 is romantically attracted to her 8 29 2006 most recent psych test reports an iq of 133 yes folks the statue was romantically attracted to the caretaker SCP to the SCP-012 Item Class Euclid A Bad Composition Special Containment Procedure SCP-012 is to be kept in a darkened room at all times. If the object is exposed to light or seen by personnel using a light frequency other than infrared, remove personnel from mental health screening and immediate physical. Object is to be encased in an iron shielded box suspended from the ceiling with a minimum clearance of 8 feet from the floor, walls, and any opening. Description SCP 012 was retrieved by archaeologist K.M. Sandoval during the excavation of a northern Italian tomb destroyed in a recent storm. The object, a piece of handwritten musical score entitled on Mount Golgotha, part of a larger set of sheet music appears to be incomplete. The red-black ink, first thought to be some form of berry or natural dye ink, was later to be found human blood from multiple subjects. The first person to locate the sheet, Site 19 Special Salvage, had two members descend into insanity, attempting to use their own blood to finish the composition, ultimately resulting in massive blood loss and internal trauma. Following initial investigations, multiple test subjects were allowed to access to the store. In every case, the subjects mutilated themselves in order to use their own blood to finish the piece, resulting in subsequent symptoms of psychosis and massive trauma. Those subjects who managed to finish a section of the piece immediately commuted suicide, declaring the work to be impossible to complete. Attempts to perform the music have resulted in a disagreeable cacophony, with each instrumental part having no correlation or harmony with other The fun word. I don't know if I pronounced that correct, but cacophony. It, it's, it's a loud mess, in other words. I'm glad y'all like these, by the way. These actually help me relax to actually say them and listen to the brain. And so I hope that y'all are relaxed as well. SCP-013. Blue Lady Cigarette. Object class safe. Closer containment procedure, SCP-013, are to be kept in secure storage vault at Site-66. Exposed subjects are to be monitored for differences between their symptoms. Both subjects are to be interviewed daily, and any changes in perception are to be logged. Description, SCP-013 is a collective designation of 242 cigarettes, which display similar anomalies. The most common external detail between instances is the presence of the words Blue Lady handwritten on the cigarette on each cigarette in blue ink. Um, looking at the picture here, it does not look handwritten. But sure. Um, I would also like to say the reason why I haven't put these images up, and maybe I will in the future with editing, is because the one comment I got back said that as long as my face is seen, they were happy. Subjects who consume, I love that word, consume, the contents of SCP-013 through inhalation will begin to perceive themselves as a specific unidentified woman. Subjects who describe the woman to be aged between 25 and 35 years old, standing approximately 1.6 meters tall, with an estimated height weight of between 50 and 55 kilograms. Additional reoccurring details include cropped dark hair, blue eyes, and bright blue lipstick. Let's see where Blue Lady is coming from. Immediately after consuming, lovely word, consuming an instance of SCP 013, subjects will gradually begin to perceive reflections of themselves 
as having the features of the woman, and will gradually perceive their bodies changing to reflect their appearance over the course of the following week. All changes are entirely mental. The subject's body does not change outwardly, only their perception of themselves. These alterations are permanent and cannot be reversed. SCP-013 was discovered after the suicide of an Ian Miles, packed in a large cardboard crate in his apartment. Cursory search of the apartment uncovered several hundred sketches of a figure strongly resembling the one perceived while under 013's effect. Miles' body had been found sitting in it, sitting at a desk, dead of a massive overdose, and draped over a handwritten note transcribed below. During the investigation of Miles' apartment, one civilian investigator became affected by 013's effect. An abetted agent soon contacted the nearest site, subject of the artifact, and related evidence were extracted and contained. Currently, 217 instances of SCP-013 cigarettes are contained at Biosite 66. 25 uh, are contained at Research Sector 09, pending further research into similar anonymous effects. Uh, the word similar relates to SCP-1890, which we will get to in time. Adenium. Below is the note which was acquired along with SCP-013. I see her everywhere, that sad blue lady. I feel like I used to, should, I feel like I know her, but I can't remember. I love her and I don't know why. She's so beautiful, sweet, clear, but I don't know anymore. Her favorite flavor. Where did you go? I miss you. SCP-014 The Concrete Man Item Number SCP-014 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedure SCP-014 is to be kept in sight redacted in a chair with arms, preferably facing a window. Music should be supplied on a regular basis, preferably constantly. This music should not include pieces originating after 1937. A security camera should be present in SCP-014's room. Description. SCP-014 is a Caucasian male, appearing to be approximately 30 years of age, with black hair, brown eyes, and a somewhat round face. Records indicate his name to be Robert Chetford, confined in 1915 to the Norwich Asylum in Connecticut, actually the state I'm in. Interesting. For delusional insanity, claiming that he had been cursed to live forever and was slowly turning into concrete in consequence. There you go. You get to live forever, but you turn into concrete. The asylum closed in 1937, and the patients were transferred to various other facilities. SCP-014 came to foundation attention in 19. 19- redacted from rumors of a patient who seemed to be entirely immobile and showed no signs of aging. Further investigation determined that acquisition was warranted. SCP-014 is to all outward appearances a normal man, but he does not appear to age and shows no signs of possessing a metabolism. He does not eat, drink, perspire, or in any other way demonstrate life function. He breathes only to speak, and apart from his eyes and vocal apparatus, he is to all appearances utterly immobile. He has never shown any evidence of pressure ulcers, despite his position not having varied for several decades. Neither do his muscles appear atrophied. He can converse normally, but shows little knowledge of our interest in events since his confinement. Denium, note. Frankly, were I to interview this man without knowing his history, I think he was a perfectly sane and well-adjusted individual who happens to be a quadrupede. As it is, I have to conclude that he's the ultimate proof of the idea that the mind rules the body. He thinks he's concrete and will live forever, and so he's as close to both as he can be. Somehow. Dr. Redacted. 
In this case, it is a very literal sense of mind over matter. And now, the SCP that has the first short story that will be read on Patreon. Um, link at the end of the video and in the description at the, if you would like to join that so that you could get this particular um, short story. If I remember, it's, it's quite a traumatic one. <laughs> SCP-015 Type Nightmare Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedure SCP-015 is impossible to move and is contained on site. A gap of at least six feet needs to main be maintained around the entire structure containing SCP-015 at all times, and no structures of any kind are to make contact with SCP-015's current containment structure. Expiration is permissible, but only in teams of three with full safety lines of GPS tracking. Any protrusions from SCP-015 must be capped and sealed immediately. With the new site recorded and locked, no aggressive action is to be made within SCP-015. No hand or power tools are allowed anywhere inside SCP-015. No repairs or maintenance are to be made anywhere on SCP-015. You'll find out why in the short story. Description. SCP-015 is a mass of pipes, vents, boilers, and other various plumbing apparatus completely filling a warehouse and redacted. The pipes appear to grow when not under observation, attempting to connect nearby structures via sewer systems and underground plumbing. SCP-015 contains, at current estimate, over 120 miles of pipes, ranging in diameter from 2.5 centimeters over 1 meter. Some pipes appear new, while others are rusted and leaking. Pipes have been reported as being made of bone, wood, steel, pressed ash, human flesh, glass, and granite. No pipes composed of lead, PVC, plastic, copper, or any other traditional material for the production of pipes has ever been found. SCP-015 reacts to tools and aggression. Any personnel acting violently, carrying tools, or attempting to damage or repair SCP-015 in any way will trigger re a reaction. Any pipes near the subject will burst, spraying the, on the subject for several seconds before the flow suddenly stops. Pipes have been reported containing oil, mercury, rats, a species of insect not yet identified, ground glass, seawater, entrails, and molten iron. Pipes will continue to burst around the subject until death or retreat. SCP-015 was cut back to its current containment after attaching to 11 other structures in the area. Currently, 11 personnel have been killed and 20 more are still missing. Reports have been made of banging and screaming coming from within SCP-015. Does that have any of you curious about what the short story is? I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Ending on this particular note may not be the most relaxing, but hopefully I was able to help you unwind or at least a little bit. Wish you all a pleasant evening. If you're using this to sleep, wish you good dreams.